Hey folks, welcome back to another video. It's actually a very, very sad video about Bitwig. Um, I said it multiple times in the past that I plan to do some videos that are not 100% positive. I want to highlight some problems, some bugs, you know, of Bitwig Studio. And there are multiple reasons for that. So the first reason is the most important reason. So these bugs get fixed in time. I know that some developers watch my videos here and there. So they see exactly what kind of steps I'm doing and I can, you know, fix it, optimize it or change it. The second reason is so you can tell me in the comments, Polarity, you are using Bitwig Studio wrong. Do it differently. So it's basically your opportunity to tell me in the comments that I'm stupid. Okay. Um, the third reason is to show you that I'm not just chilling for Bitwig Studio. I know that there are always someone out there, you know, thinks I'm a shill or thinks other people are shilling for different products. There's always someone, right? So I can't prove that. But it's for me an opportunity to actually um, show you it's not this way. I'm also a normal user, a regular user of Bitwig Studio. I have maybe some connections here and there, but I have also problems. And then the last thing is I'm not this kind of person that when I have a problem, I go to the next forum, right? And I open up a, you know, I want to make a beat inside of Bitwig Studio and something is not working and then I go to Reddit and write like this is not working and then 50 other people, yeah, it's not working for me either and then upload, download and then nothing happens. So I think it's better to make a video so we can talk about it and uh, you should see exactly what the problem is and um, what kind of lead to this problem. So today I'm actually in the right mood. I'm in the real right mood for something because I tried to do something. Um, oh actually me down there okay um yeah i show you this here on bitwig um so here i have some wave files and these wave files are seamlessly looping so i open this up here first in a player so you can see it so this is the wave file here and when i jump to the end here You can see it loops seamlessly from the end to the beginning without any gap or any transition or something. It's just one loop and it loops over and over. And my idea was, well, let's use this actually in Bitwig and let it loop, right? Let it loop. Uh, so I tried to drag this into Bitwig here. And there are multiple things now in place already without me doing anything. When I go here into this audio clip with tap, you can see it changed or offset the beginning. We are not at the beginning of this uh, WAV file. Which is uh, bad because, you know, you saw it's just seamlessly looping. So we need to start here at the beginning. So this, that's the first thing. The second thing is that this audio clip here is already in a stretch mode. You can see this here on the left side mode stretch and the original tempo of this wave file is 110 or that's at least what Bitwig thinks it is. It thinks it's 110 BBM. It could be something completely different. And the project tempo is also 110. So because the project tempo is 110 and this original file tempo is 110, Bitwig doesn't do anything to this file. It just plays it back completely normal. You can't hear any you can't hear any problem. It's just a normal wave file now. Okay. But now if you change the BPM of this project here, let's say down to 85 or something like this. Right. Do you see anything changing here in this file? No, you don't, right? It looks exactly the same. Nothing changes. Nothing indicates anything. But what you did just with this BPM change here is that you introduced a lot of artifacts because this is in stretch mode, which is in multiband granular stretching mode. And now Bitwig tries to match this tempo. It tries to stretch this wave file to this 77 BPM tempo here. So now it sounds like this.
So my problem now is that I can't see that actually something happens here, right? 1 under 10, 50. So this wave file looks completely the same. There's no indicator, no symbol, nothing that indicates watch out polarity. There is stretching in place. This sounds maybe different or introduces some artifacts. So this is my first problem. Um, or this is my second problem. The first problem is actually this offset here. So what I can do now to circumvent this is, I just delete this here. I go to the settings behavior and then I have your audio import settings. So what I want to do is I want to insert clip from sample start. I always want to start in the beginning. I get the idea of having insert a clip from first beat. So when you drag in, let's say a drum loop and this drum loop to the first kick drum doesn't start exactly with the first sample of the wave file, then you need to offset it. And this does this here for you. Um, I get the idea. So it's a smart solution to something, but here it completely gets in my way. So I want to disable this, right? So this is, this was my first stop. And then I thought maybe let's dial in here some default stretch modes because I never want to have a stretch mode by default. I always want to have raw. I want to have this raw wave file, right? So I go to the default stretch mode here and you can see there's no raw file stretch mode. It's gone. It's, it was removed in some of the last updates. I have no idea why. I guess because of these new audio import settings here to make this, to make everything smarter or, you know, smarter for some beginners. So yeah, if I can only choose between different stretch modes and um, I guess stretch HD is the best one. Or maybe you can use repitch. So with repitch, the problem here is um, if you change then the BPM, you change the pitch of the sample. Um, so let's do this again. So remember, we changed this here from insert clips, clip from first beat to insert clip from sample start. So now I do the same thing. I go back here to my browser and I drag this in, go in here. Now you can see it starts exactly at the beginning. So that's nice. But now this here is in repitch mode, right? Same problem. I change here now the BPM. Nothing changes in here but you actually change in the background the pitch. So now it sounds like this. So in this default stretch mode repitch here, you change the BPM, the pitch of the wave file. And there's nothing in here that indicates this. This is my problem. There should be at least something here on the left side, maybe, or maybe you, Put a small little symbol here that you alter actually the sound when you change the BPM. Um, so now we have here the beginning of this wave file, which is nice. Um, that's exactly what I want. And you can see now here um, that it's also at the end looping perfectly, right? So I go back to 110. And it's probably also, let's use here Control and L. So I loop this. Let's start here. Yeah, nice. It loops seamlessly. I can also put this here into the clip launcher. Now maybe start here at the end. You can hear the transition. And there's a small little crack. Crackle. But it kind of works. Okay, this is nice, but my track is actually not in 110 BPM, right? So now I encounter multiple different problems. So first and foremost, I want to go down to 85 because this is in repitch mode, it's now pitched down. That's not what I want. I also don't want to have here stretch HD because it introduces artifacts and repitch changes the pitch. So I want to go to raw. Okay, because I want to have the original pitch. So now it looks like this. So now we are multiple levels deep already in this wave file. And I show you exactly every level. The first level is here on the Ranger. So here we have this one. This is an audio clip. 
we go into the audio clip. Inside of the audio clip, we have this one, which is the audio event. And in this audio event, there is this wave file, which has a different length. So we here, here now, when I shorten this, we have different, three different lengths. We have the wave file itself, we have the audio event and the audio clip. Everything has different lengths. And now when I change here the BPM, you can see the wave file changes inside of the audio event. So to make this now looping seamlessly, I have to match this audio event here to this file in, in there, which is not really possible with the option here. I think there's nothing. Maybe you can tell me in the comments if there's something there to actually match the length of the audio event to the wave file in this audio event. Um, so I can only try to match it here manually. So this was my first idea. Can do it roughly and then maybe bring in here a small little thing. Um, like I said, it's overly complicated actually for a wave file that's already looping. Um, and then another thing is that you can't use this play stop thing here. So this play stop value here shows you this kind of marker. You can see this changing here, right? So you can change the length of this file inside of this audio event. So this gives you here one minute and 12 seconds. So my idea was, oh, let's actually copy this and put it into the audio event length here. But this doesn't work um, because this is in minutes and this is in beats. Um, so this also doesn't work. So it's very hard to correct this, to make this audio event exactly the length of the wave file. And then if you have then the length here with the audio event, you can use then or click on this audio event, you can use Control and L. And then you can match the length of the audio clip to the length of the audio event. That's possible. But in here, not so possible. Very hard to do. Okay, so let's try something different. We go back here and we delete this audio clip. We also delete here this audio channel. And we go to our destination uh, BPM, which is 85. And we also delete here all the cache, cache files. And we go back to our file explorer here. And we use instead of endless loop 22, we use now here 20. So there's nothing different. It's just a different wave file, right? So we drag this in. And now we have a different problem. We have our destination BPM, which is 85. But the Bitwig actually thinks this file is in 142.06 BPM for some reason. I have no idea why. Um, so we have the same problem here. We go in, we select this. Uh, we have to go back from repitch to raw, then it switches back here and there's no possibility to find the end here with the audio clip. So we can't loop it actually. Oh, is this actually snapping here? No, it's snapping to the grid, right? Yeah, it's snapping to the grid, not to the end position here. So there's no real solution to this problem. What we can do is we can use a shortcut. So let's go back here to the file explorer. And let's drag it in. But before we drag it in, we just stop and watch Bitwig. Maybe you see some kind of hint that you can do something now. And what you can see is, of course, down here, down here, all the way down, they are hidden by the taskbar of, Bit of uh, Windows. There is Bitwig Studio basically in the full window screen and it's behind the taskbar. And there is a hint that you can now hold down um, Shift, Alt and Control. And when you hit Control, you can import this audio as a raw file as before. So you need to use Control. If you press it down, now this is in raw mode. Okay. Um, so now it's a bit a bit better with this. It's a bit hidden, but you can kind of circumvent this um, stretch problem. I don't know why you have to press down a key for that. I don't know why it's why it's not here, 
because I have this since the beginning of Bitwig Studio, I have the stretch mode here on raw. And with this, we can now loop this here seamlessly. Uh, let's actually try this. Uh, let's start here in the end, at the end. There's a small click there. So this kind of works, uh, but we have still the problem that when we change now the BPM, everything is fucked up again. And we can't, can't um, you know, match here the, this audio ev event to the end of this thing. All we have to do now is we have to delete this again and go to our destination BPM, let's say 60. And then track this in, holding down control, and then the audio event matches exactly, kind of exactly, the length of the WAV file within this audio event. Um, so in my, yeah, in my case here, I have to use control, which is hidden behind here, or it's only shown in this info bar down here. There's no, no kind of thing here inside of the shortcuts menu. I haven't found anything in here. So it's pretty hidden. And it's also hidden in my case because it's hidden behind the dust taskbar here in full screen. I could put this here into this kind of mode, right? In this full screen mode. So now it's at least visible down there. Uh, but I think this could be communicated a bit clearer. Also for beginners, because beginners are not very aware, probably what's happening behind their backs. Sometimes there is a BPM detection, sometimes not. Sometimes there's something in raw mode. It, it behaves differently than when it's in repitch mode. It also behaves differently when it's in uh, this stretch AD mode or stretch mode here. So there's a lot of stuff happening in the background and it's not very clear when something happens. And when you need to do something else or when you have to change something for certain different behaviors. In my opinion, it's a, I mean, it's a complex problem and there are a lot of use cases and a lot of solutions. And I think this could be made a bit clearer and a bit more easy or easy to use. I have also no solution. What's the, what's the best way of doing this? But I think uh, just having, um, the raw mode back in here in this default stretch mode would be a, a good first step in my opinion and then maybe in here a feature that allows me to switch this back here to uh, that allows me to match the length of the audio event to the wave file inside of this audio event to give me uh, at least a key or maybe right click and match audio event to file length or maybe give me here the option to copy this um this length file length to the length of the audio event would be also a solution i'm open for everything right um so this is basically my my problem with the audio file import at the moment that it's a very convoluted or feels like overly complicated. Um, there are a lot of more problems surrounding here the wave file or the, the audio clips in general. Let's say comping here. I don't like comping at all. There's no way of disabling this. Um, I don't want to go into that. Maybe I do a, a different video about comping because I really hate comping. I have, it's not my thing. I really want to have in here behavior just a check mark right where i can say disable comping forever that's that's what i like so um i think that's it for this video i want to show you here the file import problems i had today with these uh, seamlessly looping wave files it just drove me nuts um I was going to the Discord and someone told me that you have to actually hold down control to import raw and it kind of works but it's very hidden so that's my main problem um yeah like i said that's it for this video thanks for watching tell me in the comments what you think and um see you in the next one bye